This is just not working. I think we're done. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for those movies Netflix produced that have ruined many a night of Netflix and chill. At least the first part of the night. Don't put words in my mouth, it's actually really good. Number 10, The Kissing Booth Trilogy. We get that dating your best friend's older brother could be a little awkward. Hmm, this isn't so bad. <laughs> Not so bad at all. But for Elle, it's more than just awkward. It's filled with enough drama and ups and downs to fill not one, but three teen rom-coms. The trilogy of Kissing Booth films premiered on Netflix between 2018 and 2021. While the audiences kept clicking play, the critics kept saying nay to this cliched seen it all before and seen it better trio. I always just figured we'd be number one forever. However, even though Netflix has reported strong viewership numbers for the three films, only the first one got an over 50% Rotten Tomatoes audience score, and the third film is at 19%. What? 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 Number 9, Game Over Man. Fans of Workaholics must have been pretty psyched in 2018 to see the film Game Over Man show up in their Netflix feed. What the hell are you doing, man? I'm a hustler. I'm a, I'm a hustler. I'm basically the Rick Ross of our... Friendship Tripod. From director Kyle Newichek to the film's three stars, Anders Holm, Adam Devine, and Blake Anderson, all four guys had previously created and starred in the previously mentioned sitcom. A sitcom which, it should be noted, saw plenty of good reviews. Yeah, I got nothing, man. As opposed to the action comedy Game Over Man, which one critic called, quote, an almost laugh-free comedy. The film is filled with standard and predictable genre tropes, but doesn't do any of them particularly well. This one is smart and funny guys in a not-so-smart and not-so-funny movie. Is that what you wanted to hear? Jesus Christ. Number 8, How It Ends. When it comes to this film, most folks were less concerned about how it ended. I am aware of that little detail than when it would end. Because what Netflix gave us with this 2018 action thriller is 114 minutes of bad writing, overacting, and disappointment that the filmmakers couldn't deliver on an end of the world premise with potential. And only have one question for you. Are you coming with me? Critics and Netflix subscribers agreed on this one too, with the audience Rotten Tomatoes score of 17% matching that of the critics. Forget about how it ends, and just don't start this one to begin with. All right. Hard enough. Number seven, Brain on Fire. Based on a true story, Brain on Fire tells of a New York journalist who is cured of a mysterious illness at the last minute by a dedicated and skillful Syrian American neurologist. Susanna, I will do my best to help you. I will not hurt you, and I will never lie to you. Okay? Okay. Let's begin. The film had its world premiere at the Toronto International Film Festival. While TIFF has often launched movies onto a successful and acclaimed trajectory, that wasn't the case with Brain on Fire. We'll get through this. Yeah, I hope so. Rather than provide a deep and dramatic experience, this film comes across as more of an uninteresting TV movie of the week. Critics weren't super kind to Chloe Grace Moretz's performance either. I had to learn everything from scratch. How to walk again, how to talk again, smile, how to be a daughter. The cure for this movie? Don't watch it. Number six, the last thing he wanted. If celebrities and lots of money were all you needed to make a great movie, then the last thing he wanted would have been nominated for multiple Oscars, given its $100 million budget and big name stars. I don't have any comment to make about that. Nope. With Anne Hathaway, Ben Affleck, Rosie Perez, and Willem Dafoe, this 2020 Netflix film had plenty of name power behind it. I can see you're buying into the whole package here. You're very adaptable. I never tell you that just like your mother. The problem was it didn't have much good writing to go along with it, making this political thriller much more confusing than thrilling. With a title like The Last Thing He Wanted, your movie better be good, or you're just setting us up to say, as many critics did, that this is the last film that anyone really wanted. You think you're gonna get very far? You'd be surprised. Number five, The Last Days of American Crime. Set in the near future, The Last Days of American Crime depicts a world in which the American government is set to initiate a synaptic blocker that will prevent the population from breaking the law. Once live, the API signal promises to influence criminal activity 
on a national scale. Unfortunately, there was no such device deployed to stop this awful movie from being made though. And while releasing the film at the time of the George Floyd murders was unfortunate timing, this film doesn't get let off the hook that easily. That's legacy, my friend. Legacy, that's another good word. So you want revenge, I want legacy. The movie runs two and a half hours long and is barely exciting for about an hour of that time. The 0% Rotten Tomatoes score says it all, as does the wonderful consensus line, quote, this crime is punishment. Sorry to disappoint you. Number four, true memoirs of an international assassin. Remember how Paul Blart Mall Cop was an average comedy with a few laughs but lacked the quality writing to take it beyond a one joke flick? Welcome to the show. Let's mount up. Well, the problem was that the movie was a big hit at the box office and apparently gave Kevin James the confidence that he could have a successful comedy without it actually having to be that funny. Yeah, that was, that was pretty bad. And voila, seven years later, he was starring in True Memoirs of an International Assassin, another one-note action comedy with a few funny moments, but mostly one where you will find both the action and comedy pretty disappointing. Thankfully, at 98 minutes long, it's not wasting too much of your time. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Number three, me time. We're not saying a buddy comedy starring Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg can't be good, but we are saying this buddy comedy starring Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg isn't. What's up, Hawk? What's going on? What? Where are you, man? Hart plays a stay-at-home dad who, for the first time in years, has some me time while the family is out of town. However, it only takes a few days for him to get bored and hook up with his wild former best bud, Wahlberg. It's about us. Okay. Uh, we're going back to basics. This is the point where we should tell you that hilarity ensues. Unfortunately, this poorly written comedy is barely funny. And it isn't just the critics saying that. On Rotten Tomatoes, the film has an audience score of 32% and comments like, yikes, and bored. Guys, I'm so sorry. This is a bit of a misunderstanding. Number two, father of the year. Have you ever argued with a friend about which one of your dads would win in a fight? So my dad looks like a human Muppet and I'm 100% sure he could kick your dad's ass. Come on, your dad gets startled by pop-up books. Well, that's what happens in father of the year. Two drunk college kids have said argument and the respective fathers take it seriously and mayhem and comedy follow. Well, what actually follows is a standard paint by numbers comedy with a few gross out gags. Really? Yes! There is also some predictable heartwarming stuff that is more like heart lukewarm because you really don't care that much about any of the characters. Neither you nor your dad should have to sit through this one. I don't know what your threshold is for emotional pain, so I brought options. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, The Ridiculous Six. Oh, Adam Sandler, the man is an enigma. He is, on one hand, the man behind some of our favorite comedies of all time, from The Wedding Singer to Happy Gilmore. You like that, old man? You want a piece of me? I don't want a piece of you. I want the whole thing. On the other hand, he is responsible for a multitude of lazy, unfunny, and poorly conceived comedies as well. From the barely mediocre Sandy Wexler to the less than mediocre The Do-Over. Come on, let's get real. Let maxi pads soak up your pain. But atop the list, and ours, is the almost irredeemable The Ridiculous Six. Or as we like to call it, The Ridiculous Sucks. And if you thought that joke was bad, it's better than about 99% of the gags in this terrible movie. Saddest thing you ever seen. It happens. If I was a B, don't like to admit it, but it happens. What original Netflix movies top your worst list? Let us know in the comments. Well, I know. Babe, it's just not very exciting. You're joking. No, I'm not joking. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.